And we're kicking this thing off. Williams Let's roll. Yeah. Uh, the Merrick Expanses Agricultural Board has paid for your salary and repaired your battle mech. They have left you a package with a custom MEAB Billy Jim Apex Dragons mashup logo on a range bowl leather mech seat cover. <laughs> that was a lot of words, and they do technically mean something. They do. That's awesome. Uh, so there's two seat covers. One is for Buttercup. The okay. other one is for the SDLF Shadowhawk. Ooh. And then there is a patch for like your cooling vest so you can wear it into the arena if you so choose to represent the Marek Expanses Agricultural Board. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely slap that patch on the on the uniform on the cooling vest, and that makes sense. Now, I had completely forgotten about the SDLF Shadowhawk. That is an important one to not forget. It's a little expensive to repair. Was it repaired the last time it was used? Um, no. Yeah, I didn't think so. It is still damaged. Cool. All right. Is there anything you want to swap up in terms of interns in or their mechs? Um, well, uh, so I started Astrid training on the uh, my Wolfhound, getting her synced up with that. You reminded me of the SDLF Shadowhawk, so I'd like to get her started on that one at the very least. Okay. So are you assigning that mech to her? Mm. Sure, why not? Let's do it. Okay. Let's do it. So she's the first gladiator to have... A stable mech assigned, although I believe uh, some people are planning to give mechs to other. It makes sense. Cosmo lost his dart. I thought he might have given something to PK, but maybe he's just. I know he was he was trying to make something available for Saya and PK to to mess around with the Jenner. Yeah. Uh oh! Did he have a personal Jenner? Is that what it was? I think so. Oh, yep. He gave PK his Jenner 7D. All right, so they both have mechs now. Cool. And um, as far as the rest of folks, I would like to do a little like... Oh, no. Poor Saya. She has no mech. Yeah. She's being passed up by all of her contemporaries. <laughs> well, but she's going to be, you know, she needs her special mech, right? That's, that's, she can't just have any old thing. Here's the thing, though, is I'm like, Saya wants this particular mech, and everyone's like, we should give her that mech. And no one goes, what does that mech do? Mm. <laughs> like, is that, no one, no, everyone asks how mech you want, not why, why? mech you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's completely fair. I honestly don't have any clue. I mean, um, it's a 25-ton mech. She's going to get obliterated by anything heavier than her. Is that's true, because she's supposed to go up against, like, mediums and heavies. Yes, and assaults. Yeah. Oh, and an assault. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah. That's brutal. The clan magic quite can't quite work that clan well, Clan light right? pilots are, are supposed to actually be very good pilots, like, with ah, years of experience, you know? Saya does not have that. No. <laughs> mm, that's interesting. Maybe I should assign her one of our heavies or assaults just to mess with her i think that <laughs> she was training in the king crab for a while or maybe okay. one of the marauders but yeah yeah let's do that let's give her the king crab okay all right i want to see what happens well that's that, that one. the king crab is kyle's oh that's right okay yeah, he's assigning his own king that's crab his personal all yeah. right i feel like i need to get the spreadsheet for what, what all the stable has up in front of me at one. some point maybe i'll make it it could be useful. I'll make it public. I don't know. Okay. It's, well, see, uh, the problem is it's part of my super set of documents. That's like, who are all the competitors? You know, what right. matches are where? I don't know that I want to. You don't want to reveal the man behind the curtain. I no, I don't want to double up that work. <laughs> that's fair. Definitely fair. Um, so I think last time at the end, I had said that I was going to train Astrid and we wound up going on some hunting trips as part of that as well. We're off in the, the Western continent. I do want to have a quick uh, conversation with her when we're you know, sitting there in the early morning mist with our breath fogging in front of us. Okay. Just a, just a, just a small one to give her some, some context. And essentially, um, can we wait, is this the kind of scene that like some light acoustic country music will be playing in the background? Hmm. I don't know. You tell me. Like, you so know, like maybe one guitar. 
it could start that way and okay. then right like it starts that way it's sitting there because they're just the hanging sun out, right? majestically rising mm -hmm. exactly and and so you know it, it's going it's nice and chill very relaxed and and they're just kind of shooting the shit a little bit right waiting for something to show up and um so hillbilly kind of asks her uh, a, a little bit you know they, they've been getting to know each other and and you know hasn't really talked much about her past uh and so he asked her about her family and, you know, when, what would the last thing he heard that she heard uh, from them was essentially, and kind of what the story there was. He knows that she has no idea really what's happened to them. Okay. Yeah. So she, uh, she just says rather frankly that she believes that they're dead. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise they would have gotten in contact with her. And she tells you about her extended family, her mother, her father, three aunts, uh, a grandfather who was the one who taught her hunting before he got too old to continue to do it. Um, but he would never like he would never complain, like, even though it was clear that his back hurt and like it was too cold for him, he would still take her out every year. Even as he got older and less capable, she got older and more capable. Um, until she was, you know, there was that point where she got better than him and then just kept getting better and better. And at that point, you know, he had to call it in for, for the summer. You know, and that there reminds was... me a lot of my Pappy Schmidt. <laughs> <laughs> she says, oh yeah, tell me about him. And he's a great guy. He's actually, you know what? He, he came and joined me on Solaris not too long ago. You, I'll get, you'll get the chance to meet him. I'll have to introduce you. You might like him. He's a great guy. He, he's taught, he taught me everything I know, actually. You know, took the same damn thing. Took me out hunting, showed me the way of the world. He's been a mentor for me. He's been there for me a long time. You know, in, in my past, I, I don't know if you know this, but, you know, I, I grew up in the middle of a war, too. I lost family. I lost folks. I lost my mother in that one. Cousins. I know a little bit about what you're going through. Have you she gazes at the rising sun and pulls out a pair of sunglasses and puts them on and says, it's the 31st century. Mankind is always at war. Yeah, too true. Too true. People like us, we're always caught in the middle. Everyone's people like us. <laughs> well... Yeah, there's some folks who get to pull those triggers and make those decisions, though. I don't know. It's... Seth seems surprisingly human for a, you know, genetically engineered super weapon. <laughs> well, that's just it. I think that's how you got to think of them. They are humans. No yeah. different than us. He just seems kind of dumb and awkward. <laughs> I really well, we've all been thought that maybe they would have it figured out, you know? They seem they sound like they have this really big plan. But when you ask them about it, they've got just as much doubts as we do. Yeah, yeah, well, that's exactly it. Anybody who tells you they got all the answers, you can be damn sure that they're they're lying to you. All right. So this is where it gets a little creepy because she takes a sip of that steaming cup and it's just like, I'll have all the answers one day. I'll figure it out. What's your plans? What's your future? What are you thinking? We need to change the way we live. And I don't know yet, but there has to be a better way for us as a people, as humans. You know, we've had a lot of different types of ways of doing things. She takes a deep breath and looks at that, you know, fading, purpling sky that's now turning into a brilliant yellow and blue and says, you know, representational government, democracy, back to nobility, back to democracy, back to nobility. We need a change. We just keep using the same ideas over and over again. <laughs> It's inefficient and ineffective. Look how long it takes anyone to respond to the clan invasion. Months, if not an entire year, in order to 
to prepare for war. It, take, it took them a decade, multiple decades, to prepare to fight us. But yeah. let's say I had a problem with you. I could just pull out a knife and stab you in the heart right now. That's a problem solved very quickly. He's quite sadder. There has <laughs> to be a better way to move people to change the way we do things. And she doesn't look at you at any any point while she says that she could stab you in the heart. <laughs> Let's be clear. She's cold. Yeah. She's she's a Astrid Elsa daughter. She's as cold as the frigid snows of Rathlog. <laughs> I love it. Well, you know Astrid. That's a lot of political philosophy, a lot more than I thought you might have uh, had hidden under those uh, stone cold eyes. <laughs> Put a lot of thought into this, I, but you know, doesn't sound like you have that answer yet. I don't, but I will. There, There is an answer. There's always an answer to everything. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you know, what I can tell you I believe in is freedom for people to make choices and be the people that they want to be. And I can, I can definitely agree with you that the current system doesn't necessarily make that easy or possible for a lot of people. So she smirks a little bit and takes another sip and says, but what does that freedom cost you? That's a good question. Freedom Security. isn't really free. Not if you don't have choices. But how do you know you're making good choices? You can make that's, plenty that's of choices. You make, you make tons of choices every day. Exactly. No matter who's running or how things are running. Is freedom yep. really as cracked up as you think it to be? Does your self-determination change anything? How, how much influence do you as the person who runs the stable actually really have? <laughs> Look at yeah, it that right. way. You're right. No, you're but freedom, what... but you've made very few choices, even though you could make as many choices as you want. And how much have those choices really influenced the way that this company is run? Mm. Have you ever thought about that? That maybe oh, freedom isn't as cracked up as it as it claims to be. What I'll if see. happiness and contentedness, being taken care of by someone more powerful and wiser is what's really important. Maybe not making choices. No one's upset with your leadership, William. You, you don't get that involved. Yeah, but see, that's just it, is I want people to be able to determine their own paths, right? And that's kind of it. The way I think, the way I think about freedom is that, you know, in our current system, you're exactly right. Who runs this show? The folks with the money. I don't have that much pull. I'm the face. And that's it for a lot of organizations out there. You see a lot of faces out there. How many of those people are actually making those choices? But by refusing to get involved with everyone here, you've allowed chaos to reign. <laughs> Seth, Kyle, yeah. Hunter, they're out yeah. here killing all of them. They are. The things that come out of their mouth, the things that they say, I don't really know what's up with Cosmo. He's pretty mysterious. And Amos is enraged all the time, frustrated. Amos, yeah. There's no order here. Everyone's just doing what they want without a goal. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm if you forged a goal? You could do that. You have that power as the champion to direct what? everyone in one direction. Where do you see us going as a group? No, that's the thing. This is, we are all of us in, in different classes shooting to be the champion of those things. You know, what, what's the goal? What's the group goal that but you want to see? What about the message? The message. Ah, what do we stand for? Who what are we? What do we stand for? Every time <laughs> I turn on the television and they're talking about Apex Dragons, they barely ever mention the stable and only the controversies. Yeah. What if there was a it. message? We will stand at the top, the apex. Hmm. Now, you're giving me a lot to think about. 
Those aren't bad ideas. But on this topic, though, I do actually feel I need to give you a bit of warning. The stable isn't as easy to control as you might think. There are things happening behind the scenes that I certainly cannot single-handedly shift the direction of. I need you to be careful around Amos. I need you to be careful. He is not exactly what he seems. And uh, Hillbilly will walk her through the evidence that... <laughs> oh, so you're just going to flat out tell her about... Uh, do you tell her about the killings? Uh, hmm, that's a good question. Do, yeah. Should I? Should I? I will... I will go so far as to to explain the the mafia connections, okay. the the like uh, personnel who have been changing over, sure. right, and that Amos is directly involved. But do you mention that he was spotted killing someone by throwing them off a roof? Mm. What I'll say to her is that Amos is dangerous. Okay, I'll keep an eye on him. All right. As she says that, she begins cranking her crossbow. She like gestures out because there's a majestic multi-point buck out there slowly moving towards the watering hole you guys are posted up over. Perfect. As she brings the crossbow up, she says, I'll keep a real close eye on Amos Everett. <laughs> and then uh, Hillbilly just says very quietly, just let the breath out and release <laughs> okay and you're gonna be... teach her the lifelong hunter how to hunt got <laughs> well, it well you Understood. know we both are in this scenario it's sure. just a you know sure. that's fair that's fair and uh yeah i mean that's really what i wanted to uh, get out of that <laughs> i love the idea that the screen goes black but we still hear the crossbow go off mm -hmm. and that's that's the end before we cut back to i don't know what you're doing next <laughs> uh, next, I wanted to get the chance to just do a kind of like an intern stand up with the other three. Okay. Just get a chance to check in with them, see how they're doing, see if they're they're happy with their current assignments, and and looking for anything from me as their sort of uh, champion. <laughs> okay. Uh... So set up in a little like office or or spare conference room or something at the stables, and and have them each come over and have a little one on one. How strong is your sign language? Um, very weak. Okay, then your conversations with PK will be extremely limited. Doesn't he have the the device that lets him vocalize? Uh, no, that um, Cosmo has that device, ah. so he can understand everybody else okay. in PK's life that's been assigned to him all speak sign language. Okay, but okay. So what? All, sorry, all of the secret Lyran agents who have been assigned to him speak sign language specifically because they need to be able to communicate with him regularly. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so when PK comes, uh, Hillbilly will like very awkwardly make the like, how are you uh, in ASL? Yeah. Uh, so he uses a tablet to write on yep. and communicate with you. Yeah, he indicates that it's it's been a rough time. There's a lot of adjustment. There's a lot going on with his life. And uh, the his mentor's... Uh, recent loss has been a shocking upset. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, Hillbilly will uh, respond and just say, you know, PK, everybody's going to take a loss every now and again. It's about how we get back up, right? Got to keep trucking forward. Got to have faith. Cosmo's got that in him. He writes, does he? Question mark. <laughs> He's never lost before. No. You know him better than I do, and I kind of think that in his life, he's he's lost a few times. Yeah, he, he just writes you back letting him know. Uh, he's only briefly met Cosmo several times before coming here. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. He, he was friends with his father. Ah, uh, gotcha. Family friends. All right, well, you know, that's fair. Well, PK, if everything's going well and you don't, you're not looking for anything from me, I can let you go. And, um... If he has anything else to say, I'll wait. But there is one thing. Yeah. I don't know how to deal with Saya. <laughs> she giving you trouble. I 
think he sits there and stares at you for like 30 yeah. seconds before writing yes in all lowercase. <laughs> By that, I mean more trouble than she gives other people. He writes again, yes, but this oh. time it's one, the uppercase Y. <laughs> well, I can have a conversation with her, but I don't know how much that's going to help. She seems to be somebody who pretty much just respects strength. Yeah, so he sends you a message that says, I've, I've been assigned to work with her, but she looks down on me as something less than human because of my injury. Hmm. Yeah, she that's a particular is clan a, quirk. A bully. Hmm. Everyone dotes on her as if she's the best, but she's just kind of a huge jerk. Yeah. Yeah, that no, that makes sense. You know, PK, the best advice I can give you right now is is to get better. Beat her in the simulator. Do something that that changes that opinion. I don't know if it's gonna make it easier to interact with her, but at the very least. It's going to change it. He flips over the tablet and it just reads, she's actually really good, though. <laughs> well, usually the cocky are, but that's just it. You, you had your concerns about Cosmo, right? He's, he's never lost. You're worried that that's going to affect him. Same thing could happen to her. You want to knock her off her, off her high horse a little bit, then that's the way. You got to find what it is. Uh, he gives you a slight smile as he types out, I guess I'll get training in a hover tank then. <laughs> Going that route. All right. Well, we'll see what Cosmo has to say for you on that one. I think he's got some other designs for you. Yeah. So he writes out a pretty long message explaining that while he's interning here, he's actually looking for just for training to become a mercenary and he apologizes you know because this is a pretty competitive stable but he got in you know basically through nepotism he recognizes all of this and the fact that whatever training he gets here will basically be wasted except for the mech training you mm -hmm. know learning mm -hmm. the ins and outs of solaris <laughs> putting the time in apprenticing but it's it's invaluable for becoming a mercenary especially a mech warrior um but that uh Dealing with Saya and people with personalities like that, he's not sure that it will reflect on his future uh, endeavors. Yeah, you're going to find personalities like that in just about every profession. I can promise you that. You're, you're definitely going to need to navigate those various things with diplomacy, especially as a mercenary. So he writes something, then he puts both his elbows on your desk and flips the tablet over and it says i cannot imagine a world filled with sayas <laughs> i i don't want to and i i understand <laughs> he sighs and then lets his shoulders fall i'm like pk can you imagine a whole world yelling out i am jade falcon <laughs> he doesn't respond <laughs> goes a little pale all right, well, I'll let him go. I'll push across, though, before I do a handwritten note. It's in a sealed envelope, and it's for Cosmo. And okay. I say, could you pass this along to Cosmo? Uh, in the note, I'll just tell you, uh, the, it, it, it says, the curse is coming from inside the building. <laughs> Pay attention to the personnel changes. Talk to Hunter. <laughs> wow, the rebellion is beginning. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Got to make moves somewhere. I mean, the gladiator hall coming up will be the decider. So I know <laughs> what's interesting is you guys took so long to organize it. You're just cramming in literally 24 hours before the hall. Yep. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're, we're getting used to this stuff. It's different. I think that's the, one of the difficulties is to know how like easy to do communication between battles. I think we're, we're getting a little better at it, but <laughs> sure, sure. Okay. Uh, Lynn Hilder does not show up to meet with you unless you force the issue. Okay. Yeah, I mean, she can miss the meeting. I'll just sit there, check my watch. All right. Uh, well, I mean, you know, like she RSVPs as a no, right? Okay. She's just like, okay. unless Doesn't this just skip is it. necessary for my training, I do. I, I'll decline. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'll let it slide. Saya shows up five minutes late, wearing uh, heart sunglasses, pink shaded heart sunglasses, 
and sipping on some sort of like Gatorade through a twirly sippy straw type thing and just I don't know flops into your office chair and it's just like hello William noisy doing, sipping Sam? noise <laughs> William will sit back and cross his arms and kind of cock his head and say yeah, you're a lot more casual than I might have been expecting I am practicing inner sphere customs are you? of the children of my age <laughs> All right. All right. Gotten into any extracurricular activities? I am attempting to form a SIBCO while I am still a cadet. Oh, really? Who have you been talking to? Oh, plenty of people around here. No? Some of the mech techs, although we have been going through them rather quickly. Yeah, there's been a lot of turnover there. Yes. I don't like the new ones. I don't disagree with you. They've got a particular personality. Hmm. Well, have you made any uh, inroads with friendship on any of the other interns? Friendship is such a inner sphere concept. <laughs> it is, yeah. I have I, attempted I, to bond with other cadets. How do you how do you feel about them? PK is weak. PK is weak. He Why do you fail? Think? He has no capability to become a warrior and no interest in becoming one. He wishes to become a lucre warrior, dark cast bandit. Uh, what is, so is that the, the clan's view of mercenaries? No. Oh, the clan's view of what happens here on Solaris is mixed. The clan's view on mercenaries is universal. Yeah. Dislike. There are... Allow me to tell you a story of my childhood. Yeah, please do. On the homeworlds, on Ironhold, where I was created, there were men like PK, men who wished to fight for money. The concept of money is unusual for clansmen. But I can see now that it is pervasive, universal. The idea of some who want more than others without having worked for it properly, without having contributed to society. These men would kill in exchange for goods, eliminate my spouse so that I might get a new one. My neighbor has been moving our property line eliminate him that sort of thing when i was 13 years old my sibco unit was given las pistols and knives and we completed a training exercise by raiding a headquarters of one of these bandit cast it was a good day. I remember it very clearly. Not my first kill, but no. my most vivid. What do you mean your most vivid? I remember the screams of the three men that I stabbed. I bit away mm -hmm. my last pistol so that I might be first through the door. You're an eager thing, huh? She sits up in her chair, puts the drink down, stares at you hawkishly, and says, I am Jay Falcon. Get the feeling that means a little more, depending on the context. It is what it is. And That's she picks fair. her drink back up and makes a noisy, you know. <laughs> Stirs the straw real. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, so I just kind of wanted to check in with you. You got anything you need from me? No. I would like to face down with Astrid at some point, if you could arrange 
such a bout. She's my only real competition here. I think we can do something that way. Sometime in the future here. Good. I'll leave, uh, I'll reach out to Kyle. I hope that you'll approve of live fire training exercises. Sorry, I think I used a contraction there. I hope that you will approve of... She, what can I say? She is Shade Falcon. Yeah. <clears throat> that approval's definitely going to come. Everybody's going to need at least some... Good. ...feeling of that fear. I don't know if it's going to be soon, though. She lifts up her heart-shaped sunglasses, and she smiles, but it's a cruel smile, like intentionally full of malice, and says... I look forward to seeing Astrid filled with fear. She is far too arrogant for my tastes. Arrogant? Coming from you? All right, all right. <laughs> what do you think about yourself? What was your, what's your main personality trait? I am Jade Falcon. All right. <laughs> well, thank you, Sai. I appreciate your time. If you don't need anything else, I, I think I've got what I need from you. She stands up and says, Arrogance is earned, Captain. Mm. I call that confidence. Interesting that one can have so many words for the same thing. Arrogance is unearned confidence. Then I don't know why you would assume that I am arrogant. She Definitely says have a history. she sips from her <laughs> cup and leaves. That was a that was strong play. Yeah, <laughs> she's an intense, intense personality. Kyle's done very well to keep her uh, slightly under control. <laughs> awesome. Well, that yeah, that was what I wanted to accomplish with the interns. Um, look, there's an alternate timeline where Saya and Seth are assigned to each other. I want you to imagine, like that might be a whole episode to explore mm. one day. Like Seth's Grand Championship Bout Class Six, like alternate timeline where Saya is his uh, mentor or mentee. Oh, yeah. that's what I should have should have asked her about is how she felt about Seth joining Kyle's <laughs> clan, so to oh, speak. Oh boy, don't worry. There's going to be a lot. <laughs> <on Kyle. laughs> So the audience might not know this, but uh, in order to, but like our schedules are all messed up this week. So in order to accommodate for it, I'm doing two Solaris nights today. And then tomorrow night is the Gladiator Hall. So we're doing back to back. As soon as I'm done with Ludeman here, I basically have to start prep. Yeah, it's a busy day. Oh. Tomorrow's going to be huge. That's for sure. <laughs> um, okay. So last thing I want to do before I kind of get to the match is I did want to have a conversation with Vimy Diamond Shock. Vimy Diamond Shark. So several several episodes of Who's the Con have been produced, and the first one mm -hmm. has been released to pretty high level of critical acclaim okay. uh, on Solaris. It hasn't yet spread out across the communication networks to the other planets of the inner sphere, but at least here, there's a very liberal view towards clans sort of accepting that they're here to stay. Mm -hmm. And uh, looking into... It's not authentic clan culture and traditions, obviously. Vimy has dumbed it down so that the the regular spheroid might understand what's going on. Yeah. Right? Um, but he's got a pretty good sense of humor, and he pulls it together. So maybe you find him on the studio a lot after recording an episode. Okay. He holds out a hand for you to shake and says, William, good to see you again. Vimy, nice to see you as well. This has been fun. I've been enjoying myself. Oh, excellent. The ratings have been fantastic so far. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. Yeah, it is what we're looking for. Pulling in a lot of those sea bills. I really <laughs> enjoy the inner sphere way of interacting with money. Yeah. Getting used to it. You'd be surprised what you can spend it on. <laughs> I think I might be surprised what you spend it on. You would be. I think we might need to get out for a night or two. Little toy dolls. Little toy dolls? 
You would not believe the kind of killing we're going to make back in the clan homeworld. Really? We don't have this technology. So no, wait, no, wait, no, wait. You, you said killing back on the clan homeworld. What? How, how do you like get value out of this? You're going to get bar. Is this barter? How do you, how do you do this? I know y'all don't really do money, right? I have gained the licensing rights to several of these different dolls. Have you heard of the Star League girls? I can't say that I have. All right. So it's basically like American girls, <laughs> you know, those dolls, but for each of the great houses, you know, like oh, the, the German one and then the French one, the Japanese <laughs> one, the Chinese Sweetenese. one, and the Austrian <laughs> one. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, for hundreds of years, these five dolls have been unchanged, but then they added a new doll like 20 years ago. It was very controversial. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, he just explains to you that, you know, he got the licensing agreement to extend... Uh, to the clan homeworld so he can't disclose like where they are or how many there are but right. he got licensing for at least 12 worlds where uh, the diamond sharks are the exclusive manufacturers of this product which they are going to sell to the lower casts they feel like this sort of media will catch on and more importantly he explains to you with a predatory glint in his eye well you have to realize once we start selling this to our lower caste, we're going to sell it to everybody else's lower caste. And that is going to force them to either eliminate trade with us, which will not work out well for them in the long run, or maybe start adopting some of our views. Yeah, man. Yeah, I like your, the way us. you think. I like the way you think. Absolutely. Right. I think I've told you before, and I'll tell you again. Uh, you inner sphere people, you need to pick which one of the clans is going to be running this place. Because we're coming, and we're not stopping. 15 years <laughs> might seem like a lot to a clansman, but it's nothing to a clan. Wow, oh, Vimmy, my man. I mean, you know, not other of us can predict the future here. I think there's definitely a future where we're all doing stuff together, though. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, you know, the thing about diamond sharks is that they're adaptable. You know, when we started our life as a clan, we weren't called the diamond sharks. Huh? We were called Clan Sea Fox. So That's you hear fox, you think a uh, cute little animal, right? Well, it's it's yeah. more like a sort of vicious sea otter. We really liked it. It was pretty good. And, uh, you know, one day the scientists were like, hey, we can't find any sea foxes. So the con went out into the ocean was like, where are these sea foxes at? And you know what? They're all dead. It turned out one of the other clans genetically engineered a new super predator to kill the sea foxes in order to embarrass us you know what that super predator was called i'm guessing it's a diamond shark it was called the diamond shark and so the clients <laughs> they're like oh you lost your predator huh and we said you know what we really like this diamond shark thing and they said you know what okay you can keep it yeah you know but hey there's I hope you know, they say that we've been keeping the last uh, breeding pairs of uh, sea foxes alive for a while now. You know, sometimes they find new ones in the wilds. So we keep the heart of the sea fox alive, but uh, diamond sharks, mm, they're incredible hunters. Yeah. You know, well, and really the thing is, they really maintain a community around them. Do they? Oh, yeah. You know, you got to leave stuff in your wake once you're eaten. Then other yeah. smaller sharks come up and they, uh, you know, they clean you. They clean up all your mess. That's the diamond I, shark way, is adapting to your environment. Oh, I'm glad you understand. Because <laughs> I have to tell you, the wolf is going to swallow you whole, but the diamond shark, you can join the school. Well, you know, I think what I can say is I really appreciate your commitment to adaptability. And I Thank think you. that gives us a, a, a long tail where we get to work together. You know, I appreciate that. And just because I work well with you, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a promise. When I face down with your boys in the heavy class, in class uh, four, I'll do my best not to kill them. I really appreciate that. I thought you might. That definitely means a lot. You know, I got a question for you. How difficult is it to get messages in and out of clan space? It depends on who you know. If only That's you knew... Uh, a sanctioned Diamond Shark warrior with access to our uh, Warship's HPG network. If only, you know what? And I kind of was wondering if you might be able to help me out with a little problem. Well, hey, listen, let me tell you how advanced our network is, okay? 
Mm -hmm. Did you know that if you have two hyperpulse generators in the same system and your target system, you can actually have a live video conversation between the two? That's amazing. Real time? Yes. Now, check this out. Our clan system is so robust. When the Ilkhan died, we had live video from the Innisfere back to the clan homeworlds. Yeah. Even I don't know how many jumps that is, but I can <laughs> tell you it took us over a year to get out here. So Yeah. Yeah. That's a lot of time. Well, that's enough to grow a little older. Yeah. We just have a lot of jump ships with a lot of hyperpulse generators. Your people, you know, I don't want to say you're stupid, but uh, it seems like you... <laughs> Look, I think we all know by now, right? Comstar intentionally sabotaged all of you, stole the HPG technology, turned it into a religious thing. It's not that you're stupid. It's just that you've been standing with a boot heel on your throat. You uh, that I, I, I tend to agree. You know, structures of power are definitely aligned against the common people most of the time that's why you need a good accepting liberal-minded government <laughs> you're the source huh i'm telling you you have to pick which boot is going to be standing near you because the diamond shock doesn't stand on you we help you stand up to the next step mm. everybody else is looking to step on you well, a lot you know. of money be, to be made in cooperation, William. Look at what we're doing here as he wraps an arm around your shoulder and gestures to the movie theater. How how do you think I felt when I got to the Innisfere and then we immediately lost the Battle of Tukiyid? You know? That's going to sting. I know. 15 years? It's going to be tough for a guy like me to make a blood name, you know? Yeah. Hard to get remembered. How old are you? <laughs> me? Oh, let's see. 25. All right. I got a couple of years on you. That's true, but uh, I got to retire in 10 years, you know? Yeah. I yeah, don't quite have that trouble. But you know how you set yourself aside? You do great acts. You serve the clan. You serve the <laughs> way of the clan, and you act with honor. And that's yeah. what we're doing here. I'm introducing the clan homeworlds to an entirely new method of entertainment. Honorable yeah. warriors clashing... Inner sphere free births, learning the way of the clans and adapting to it. Kyle is going to be very, very entertaining back home, and I have secured the broadcast rights for that. Yeah, congratulations. I mean, I definitely think there's a lot of value to cultural exchange here. I mean, with any luck, I we agree. can use that. You know, I'm hoping that you'll be popular back home too. I'm in contact with your uh, your corporations. We're trying to get some, uh, you know, the genetic outline of your billy jims i like it yeah absolutely that sounds great i think we've got a lot to do yeah in that un arena unhealthy useless snacks like that'll be a big hit back home we don't have anything like that it? none of us like it <laughs> your billy jims are exceedingly wasteful manufactured but you know what well, the thing about it is is they that last <laughs> the clans are changing Exactly. The lower caste, now that they know about the inner sphere, they want a little taste of that stuff. And mm -hmm. It's up to warriors like us to provide it for them. Right. For a price. I see your vision of the future, and you know what? I, I'm going to be pushing you. I'm going to be pulling you in my direction as much as I can. <laughs> oh, William. Don't worry. Because it's an exchange, right? Back and forth. We'll see where we meet in the middle. I don't know. He puts, but... a, he, he puts another hand on your shoulder and says... One day you will make a fine merchant clansman. I would be honored to take you as my bondsman. I'll take that as the compliment that you mean it as. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, Bimmy, you've, have you heard of Astrid Elsa Daughter? She's a, an intern at our stable. I can't say that I have. All right. Yeah. Well, she hasn't gotten her name out there. That's for sure. We're I've heard of we're the other one. Training up. <laughs> the other one. I, I assume you mean Saya. Oh, everybody's heard of Saya in the clan community. Yeah, she's a popular one, huh? No. <laughs> no. Not well liked. Why would she be clans. well liked? She's 18. She's too old to become a warrior. She's. Oh. As far as I'm concerned, she wouldn't even cut it as scientist cast or 
Certainly really? with that attitude, Merchant Cast, I would probably assign her as a laborer. That might and a low a ranking a one at that. She doesn't really have the kind of skills or capability. That is not how she represents herself. Yeah. I think you'll find that Jade Falcons have great self image. You know, they like to pretend that they're the best clan out of all the clans. But the founder had the opportunity to leave his legacy with them and chose not to. That's interesting. Well, that definitely changes the color that I have of uh, Saya in my head. Well, Saya thinks she's a warrior, and she has yet to prove it. Yeah, well, she's going to get her chance eventually, but we'll see Will how that she? goes. That's really unfortunate. <laughs> well, it's at least in the plans. But I bring up Astrid because and, and messages into clan space, mostly, well, clan held space, I guess I should say. Specifically, the Free Rassel Hag Republic. Do you think you could help me, you know, send out some feelers? She had some family there that... I I could. I know some ghost bears. It seems like Seth would be the better man to ask. Well, I thought about anymore. that, but I, I had some concerns there that with his recent changes, that might be a little more difficult for him. Is there a particular planet that you're looking for? She's from Rassel Hag itself, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I'll let him know that. All right, so he just says, well, okay, so maybe not exactly uh, ghost space. That's clan wolf territory. Oh. All right, well, you know, wolves like to play ball. They got a lot going on right now. Ilkhan's in a lot of trouble. But uh, their merchants are pretty fierce dealers. They have a good logistics network. I'll tell you what. Put out some feelers. I'll see what I can do. You say her name is Astrid Elsa Dada? That's the one. All right. I'd really well, appreciate it. You let me know if I can uh, help you out in any way. Now look, as a clansman, my word means everything. So I can't assure you that I am going to come back with something. But I'm going to try my best. That's all I'm asking. He holds out a hand for you to shake. I shake it. What do I get? What do you need? What about a favor down the line? <laughs> Favors can be dangerous. I agree. But this is important to me, so I'll. I'll but you don't have that. coin to pay me what I want for this job, especially <laughs> not if you don't have it up front. No, I think a favor will do. All right. I'm an honorable man, William. You can assume I, I I'm not going to abuse that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I definitely think we have a good relationship moving here. I think you wouldn't take this to the wrong place. So, yeah, a favor it is. He gives you a predatory grin that makes you think, you've, been, you've known this guy for a little while. You've talked to him, but this... Not long enough. <laughs> this is the diamond shark. Oh, I like it. Okay. Fade to black. <laughs> That's it. I'm ready to go. All right. Hmm. Oh, you find yourself in an interview with William. He says, William. William. Oh, dang. You know what? Someone actually finished the William drawing, but I forgot to get it posted up here. Oh. We'll uh, we'll have I'll maybe I'll get the lore masters to add William to the wiki. Yeah, <clears throat> there's a lot going <laughs> on. The hillbilly. <laughs> yeah, double double. It's been a busy busy time. A lot of shakeups. You know, you're the face of your organization, and yep. I always ask you to comment on what's going on, but. The allegations that Seth is not a real clansman is, and in fact, ah. he is. He's from Tharkad and used to be a uh, hollow repairman. Kyle Morgan's upset victory, following the way of the clans and essentially entering into a sort of slavery bargain. Hunter McGregor being spotted in an illegal blood pits fight where he killed a man it has been a rough week for your organization apex dragons 
So maybe I'll let you comment on whatever you want rather than grill you on anything. <laughs> well, I appreciate the leeway. You know, the also, one thing I, can... I do want to mention the first episode of Who's the Con is out, starring yourself and Vimy Diamond Shark. Hey, it's a great time. Did you get to see it? I did see it, and I also taped it for posterity. Oh, perfect. You're going to want to hang on to that one. I think there's going to be some collector's value there for sure. <laughs> now, you're right. There's been a lot going on. But the, the one thing that I think I can address in media is you're, you're a respected media personality. You know, do you buy into crazy conspiracy theories, these things being presented by Jacques Swift? Well, I don't know Jack Swift at all. Whittington is a little far from Solaris. Uh, some mm. would call it the Moss Isley of the inner sphere. <laughs> Wretched hive. Well, at the very least, it's the furthest point from civilization. All right, fair enough. You know, what I can tell you is that Jack Swift is full of it. He's reaching. He's, he's trying to stir up trouble to, to get ratings of his own. So you have proof that Seth is who he says he is. Yeah, the proof is in the pudding. Have you ever seen Seth not act like a Klansman? I have to tell you, a lot of what I assume a Klansman is is based off of Seth's behavior. Right. So if he is faking it, then I have no basis for what an actual Klansman is like. Well... I don't exactly have Vimy Diamond Shark on my show every week. <laughs> well, I have had plenty of conversations with Vimy, and I can tell you he certainly does not have any intuition that Seth is not who he says he is. Look at his relationship and reactions to Omega Tanaga. I don't think that's something that plays out that way. So you're he is. saying that this conspiracy has no basis in fact? None whatsoever. Very well. Do you have any comment on uh, the ongoing religious vigil that is being planned? Some will call it a protest, others call it an attempt to save a soul. Um, I don't care, which is, which is this referencing? This is Hunter McGregor talks some real mad shit about a dude's religion. Oh, okay. And this is the first <laughs> you've heard of it, of the consequences. Uh. Okay. I honestly, William, I, I don't know what you're referring to. I haven't seen or heard anything about this vigil. So the One Star Faith is uh, holding a vigil in the streets around the spare spaceport warehouse complex that Apex Dragons has been renting out. Uh, it's expected that they will block traffic, prevent workers from entering, but they insist it will be an entirely peaceful service meant to last continuously until Hunter McGregor accepts the humble light of Kerensky in his heart <laughs> and saves his soul from the damnation he has condemned himself to. Hmm. Well, look, what I can tell you is I think everybody has the right to believe what they want to believe. I think it's a little silly of them to try to be forcing Hunter to change his. But, you know, if that's what they want to do, the Solaris government, if they've got proper permits to be there, if they're, they're allowed, you know, that's, that's on them. So Apex Dragons does respect the decisions of the Solaris government. Well, of course. Don't you? Well, there is the outstanding question about Kyle Morgan's enslavement of Seth Ghostbear. Now, let, let's, let's touch on that. A measure a that's bit. still being decided in the courts. That's fair. And, you know, these are complicated topics. We are in the middle of a broad cultural exchange, learning quite a bit about the ins and outs of what these things mean. My understanding is that Seth is not, at this point, you know, enslaved in this way. He just this has essentially become a member of Kyle's family. No, but now very... he can't go back to his birth home. Now that part of clan culture, I, I'm, he's been cast I be out honest, and is I no longer understand. considered a member of them. Yeah. And he that has no chance for advancement among his people and no. no chance to pass on his genetic legacy. No children. No, no. And now, but I gotta, gotta say that was a risk that Seth took himself. And his goal was to essentially 
do the same thing to Kyle, right? Yes, that is the disturbing part. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that's how we want to be playing the game here on Solaris, but that's not for me to decide. They made that choice between Isn't themselves. It? So you do you approve of their actions or do you disapprove, William? Oh, that's not that's a good question. <laughs> Camera tight frame on you. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's something that they should probably have discussed beforehand. With you? That's how I feel. With me? With each other? It would have been nice to get a heads up. So you're upset that they didn't consult you for their little act? I'm concerned about the consequences, but I respect their decisions. Very well. There are some who say that you run a very loose stable, and that that has allowed chaos to reign. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you have allowed your gladiators to maximize their own individual talents. Yeah, yeah. And disasters. What's the phrase? Chaos is a ladder. You know, everybody's got to be able to be free to, to be. There are some who say chaos is a pit, William. Mm, yeah, depends on the person, right? Depends on the chaos and what missteps are good steps you might take along the way everybody misses a rung every now and again so you don't have any regrets about your leadership style no not particularly you know sure i could try to be a, a tight hand force everybody in the same direction keep everybody you know in line so to speak but is that what you want to see is that what the fans want to see on solaris people following you know one one man into the future or something no i i think we want to see people battling it out being themselves I think you'll find that the stable champions of Solaris are as diverse as the stables themselves. I think that's that's probably the truest thing we got here. Diversity. You are looking at another rank battle. You've been on your way up for a while, and you are challenging for the position of rank 85. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Your potential victory could lead to you being the highest ranked member of your stable. Befitting my position, right? <laughs> What's your plan going into the battle? Well, this is, do I wait, do I know I had the time the arena that I'm in, right? Uh you know what arena you're in. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, my plan ahead of time moving into this is is to make sure that I am able to control the distance a little bit. Make sure that the engagement range is beneficial to myself. And I think this arena gives me a lot of opportunities to do that. Okay. Is there anything else you'd like to add for your investors, your fans? Sure, your yeah. Friends? You know, I'd like to dedicate this victory coming up to the Merrick Expanse Agricultural Board. Okay, so you are guaranteeing victory. So you take mm -hmm. one point of stress. Yep. Negated by my hotel. <laughs> yep, just writing down here, Merrick Expanse Agricultural Board. What is your relationship to the uh, the well known Miab? I'm sorry. <laughs> what is your relationship to the Miab? I don't understand this word you're saying. The Merrick Expanse Agricultural Board, oh. the Miab. <laughs> we, well, we are business partners. We have been working together in the Billy Jams Corporation to de develop a range bull line of processed meat snacks. Extra beefy? Extra beefy. And what about your other promotions? Yeah, the Billy Book Bonanza. I specifically meant the one between you and Minxtas. Oh, the Minxtas. Yeah, you know, it's been a little while. Things have, uh, you know, been pretty busy, pretty crazy. Absolutely. We should probably be returning to that. So you're saying that you haven't been in contact with them about continuing the popular line of Billy really Slims. We certainly haven't been in contact about ending it either. Just haven't made any changes in our William current just, well, relationship. Listen, hundred percent. This is a meme of him looking at the camera, going, "Uh huh." <laughs> <laughs> the 
that's going to be on on Comstar Reddit tonight. Yep. <laughs> I get memed a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Look, making making a new meme is hard. So I have to borrow from actual meme imagery yeah. in order to make new memes. Well, that's how it works, right? You got to build on what's there. <laughs> well, I mean, look, they've tried to design AI to create viral memes and they have failed continuously to do so. Yeah. Despite the fact that we as humans can identify memes really easily, AI are just like, what is humor? Right? No, they, yeah. AI is not quite AI. <laughs> so, anything else you'd like to discuss before your match? Oh, I'm ready to get out there. Let's hit the field. Okay. So your opponent enters the field first. Uh, in her traditional peach colored, sorry, pink colored Wolverine. There's like a hard hitting hip hop beat going on. Whatever passes for hip hop in the 31st century. <laughs> As a sea bill just comes out in her uh, convertible with her mech following behind her. And she steps out, gets on the microphone after passing her clutch off to somebody and says, tonight it's time to destroy a former business partner. Ooh. I have a lot of respect for William Schmidt, even if Apex Dragon says just failed in every way across the board to be good partners. But uh, tonight, I'm going to control the battlefield. That's what I'm doing here. You've heard me talk about it in the lead up to this match. William uh, just comes up short. He likes to have battles that go hot and fast and hard, but he doesn't have the stamina to keep it up for very long. And I think you're going to find that my combat style is the exact complement to his. I'm just going to prevent him from blowing his load early. The whole, the whole arena is basically just like, wow, continuous innuendo. Laughter, laughter, laughter. Uh-huh. As, <laughs> as she just lets the mic go and uh, approaches her Wolverine 7D, which we've seen before with her favorite weapon, the Ultra AC-5. Yeah. That's definitely got the range. <laughs> All right. Well, it's previously Hillbilly. failed to do anything significant with it, but yes, it does have the rage. Yeah. I mean, if it misses, there's nothing happening. So, uh, Hillbilly's uh, intro is he's returning to his original. You get Dolly Parton's nine to five piping through <laughs> the speakers. And he, he's kind of just strutting out. He's got his fingers in his belt loops, you know, and doing his thing. And, uh, the, the, the buttercup obviously is strutting along next to him. He's got probably Astrid up in the cockpit, taking care of that aspect, moving it along. Like how uh, you guys holding. have turned your interns into real interns. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's important. Uh, get out there. We, we, I grab the mic and I say, see bill. Oh, this is exciting. Yeah, I really got to start, you know, looking into these things a little more. At a time. <laughs> Researching your opponent before the battle. See, that's the reason I don't tell you guys who your opponent is, even though you'd obviously know. Mm -hmm. Because I want to, I want you to take those chances, those risks in researching. Yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. It was on my list of things. I just forgot. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Well, don't worry. You're in good company. Dynamis does it too. Mm -hmm. Well, because and the other thing is, I need to reach out because I keep meaning to have the Tamatoa as like a backup yeah. to be able to switch to based off of that research. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, Tamatoa was a drab little crab once, but now that's you, right. you got the good stuff. That's right. So, um, yeah, he's just so Seabell, this is exciting. I'm looking forward to this. You know, I don't know how it's going to go. I know what my plan is. You know what yours is. And we're going to play it out here on the field. Good luck. And, you know, hopefully we can do some more in the future. All right. And he uh, takes a swig of whiskey, shoots the musket, hops up into the mech, high fives Astrid on the way. If she will is willing to. Oh, yeah, know, she'll do it. And then she'll, she'll Aloy jump off the side. You know, <laughs> she'll you do, do like the leap and then use the rope to swing herself down safely. 
I love it. Um, you'll be fighting today in a newly finished arena on our part. Of course, this arena has been intact for hundreds of years, but it is the jungle designed by Dunamis. Uh, normally, Sidious and Dunamis work together, and by that I mean Sidious does most of the work according to Dunamis. This is a pure Dunamis creation, and you can tell because it goes through his own bags, so you can't even use the bags correctly. <laughs> <laughs> that said, yeah. it is a recreation of the jungles of Spica, a Capellan world, which makes sense because it is the Capellan arena. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Dunamis. This is awesome. Looks great. So, great news. You can pick any of the six facings to enter from. Okay. Based on initiative. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and get some Capellan dice. It's an 11. That's not so good for me. I also got an 11. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> right, incredible. Uh, seven. That is a <laughs> seven. <laughs> really? Wow. Yep. Once again. That one just won't go away. Five. Huh? Five. I got a five. What the fuck? <laughs> All right. Once more. Seven. It's a C bill. Uh, ooh, oh, at 10. All right. Okay. I have oh, to pick I first time. Yeah. All right. I want to come in from this side. Right over there? I can pick any side. Correct. All right, well, I will come in from over here. And... <laughs> so this is technically the side, right? Yep. All right. There we go. This is a Donegal Broadcasting Company news alert. Four initiative. Four. That is a five for me. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Full range check. Sure, sure, sure. I will. Uh, I'll alpha strike. No, I won't. I will fire my Ultra AC5 in Ultra mode and my SRM6. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, for the trees, what was your movement modifier? Uh, oh, sorry. That is, let's see. Uh, I ran, started off here. So one, two, three, four, five hexes. Uh, so it's a one, a run of one. So, okay. okay, well, I really hope I hit with this. <laughs> I do. Oh, and it's a double hit, actually. Uh oh. Uh, I mean, it's just five damage each. Uh, right leg for five. All right. And right leg for five. All right. SRM six is a hit. Ooh, yes, cluster rating. Three missiles hit. That's right. not that's not the worst, but so no. Uh, right torso for two. Right torso for two. Damn. Left torso for two. So she opens right. up with the pepper. Here we go. Stinging a little bit. I will return fire with seven medium lasers and an AC-20. Okay. She's got two trees and a three evasion bonus on you. Okay. Two trees, three evasion bonus. So I start at three at uh, two for my run. So mm -hmm. five plus three, eight. And two trees, so 10 
plus the one for medium. Oh, that's an 11 to hit? That sounds right. Ooh, then maybe I won't do that. Will I? Well, I kind of need the heat anyway. Uh, oh, okay. There's there's a better choice. I will uh, fire six mediums, uh, the AC-20, and uselessly fire, uh, let's see, one small laser? What are you two accounting small for your movement heat as well? Because it sounds like you're trying to hit an exact number. I am, I am. So six mediums would be 18 heat plus the seven for the AC-20, that's 25. I dissipate 20, so. Uh... You have two for moving. And then, yeah, so 27, there it is. And then I fire the two smalls uh, uselessly. And that gets me to 29, which is the nine heat that I want to be at. So six mediums at 11 and uh, the one AC-20 also at 11. So here we go, AC-20 first. That is a miss. First medium. That is a miss. Second medium. Also a miss. Third. That's a miss. Fourth is a miss. Fifth. Is also a miss. And the last one is a miss. <laughs> okay, yeah. So through the extremely light rain, not enough to cause a problem uh, this time around, uh, your lasers just begin slicing apart the humidified jungle. So whenever they hit a tree, it, it explodes in a pile of steam and splinters. And she opens the comms tauntingly and says, what's wrong, William? Well, it's a bit damp in here. I don't know what's going on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blame the sensors. Same problem as always, huh? You just want to throw it all down immediately. Well, you know, you can't help yourself sometimes. I just get excited. Okay. Uh, let's talk heat. So you build nine, which is what you want. She builds okay. uh, ten. Oh, sorry. She, she builds uh, two, four, so six. Five for jumping is 11. So she, she is good. She builds zero heat. Okay. I did that wrong. I thought she was going to build a lot more heat, so I didn't fire the pulse laser. I could have oh. got away with it. All right. Let's roll. 11. Seven. Okay. Good Let's luck. Me first. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right. Show me the power of that TSM, bro. <laughs> now that you're all heated up, you got nowhere to go. It's true. That was really... important one would have been to be able to try to close that distance, but... Yep, and you you so you still have the modifier to fire to shoot because you I have do. at least eight heat. So, yep. Yeah, I've you got really five, wanted to win initiative here. Five walk though, right? So I will one, two, three, four. Yep. And when you're going backwards, you can only walk, right? Correct. Yeah. So I will go ahead and three hexes. So it's a walk. -up. Stop there. Okay. Uh, hoping I could get somewhere to bunker into, but it doesn't look like it's possible. Or. Hexes. <laughs> okay. Yep. That's perfect for you. Yeah. All right. Fire away. Just fire in ultra AC and ultra mode at medium range. Or a jump. So. Okay. That's a hit. Uh, cluster rating of 12. So it definitely double hits. Okay. Uh, center torso for five. Okay. And right leg for five. Wow, that leg. And, yeah, man. That's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she her comms is still open. And as she like 
He uses both hands to force down the trigger of the Ultra AC5, and it just keeps so accurately. Um, it's, it's a little hard to hear over the sound of the rain, you know, because the shells aren't that big and they're firing at mm -hmm. quite a range. But yeah, like your computer is just like, warning, damage taken. And you look down and you see, ch -ch -ch, you know, like sparks flying and armor plate just falling off. Exposed parts of your leg are starting to be shown. Mm -hmm. And she yeah. says, this is what control looks like, William. And then you should try it sometime being in control. <laughs> I hear the criticism there. I think you're just trying to get me to dance, though. <laughs> if I have a chance to take that leg off, I'm going to. And you won't be dancing for very long after that. I'll keep hopping. <laughs> Let me know how things go in the corner over there. All right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't build a significant amount of heat. I have a 10. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess I have to uselessly fire a bunch of lasers in order to maintain my heat. I moved for the one. Uh, so what do you need to maintain it, huh? I need 20. So... Uh, yeah, so six, seven six mediums and the in the small, yeah. Oh, six lasers in the small would get you uh, uh, 18, twenty with 19, the movement. Twenty with, with the, the movement. movement. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you just just over there firing blindly. <laughs> All right. So people at home, a lot of them are confused. They're just like, "Why is he firing at nothing?" It's pretty clear she's out of range. And like one guy who's shaking salt into his beer goes, "Idiots! Don't you know anything?" <laughs> Yeah. Back in my the, day, the, we knew what a triple strength Myamer was. Obviously, he's trying to keep his heat up so he can keep running. And some guy is just like, shut up, old man. If he was going to run, he could at least run towards her rather than backwards. And he's like, you got me there. I don't understand what he's doing. Strategy is not strong. It's not. <laughs> yeah, all those lasers just generate a shit ton of steam. Uh... Yeah, I rolled a 10 on initiative, so... Oof. Yeah, you beat me again. All right. Make your move. Take your chance. All right, so she's queen of that hill up there. I mean, she's wherever she wants to be. Yep. Yeah, yeah. um, okay, yeah. What is my By the way, moment? I should mention, she Eight. seems more accurate with her Ultra <laughs> AC5 than she ever has been in the past. Uh -huh. Everybody I come up against seems to get more accurate. <laughs> It's weird that people get better over time and with training with lots of money. That's unusual, isn't it? It is. <laughs> All right, so one, two, three, four. No, 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 no. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight hexes, huh? Yep. Mm. I want to head up and hexes away from here. <laughs> hmm. Two. The heavy woods in front of you is going to cause you all kinds of problems more than me. Probably. Yeah, I didn't see that until I sat down. Because <laughs> the height takes those woods away, doesn't it? Uh, not the ones adjacent to you, directly okay. adjacent. So I just spend the whole turn moving to keep those 
in range and just make us impossible to see. So yeah, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Basically shield us from each other. Okay. Well. I burn off heat. So let's see. Zero. You gotta do the same thing. Fire the same complement of Yeah, basically. Oh, you uh you ran this time, so I did, so it's um You don't fire the small laser. Yeah, that's it. Alright, three initiative. Yeah, this one's the big test of if I can actually get any closer. No, four initiative. All right. Whew. Unbelievable. Yeah, you're up. Oh, wait. I thought you said you had three. Oh, you're right. I did. For some reason, I thought five. All right. <laughs> That's fine. Okay. You just keep jumping backwards. She uh, she opens comms and says, "Picked up this little trick from Amos Everett watching his match." <laughs> just kidding. This is basically what everybody with a longer range weapon than you is going to do. Yep. You know, at some point I'm going to have to do a little bit more prepare preparing before these things. Yeah, she's just like, <laughs> or maybe don't fight in a specialist brawler in a generalist category. But it's so much fun. Come yeah. on over here. I'm sure that when it works out for you, it works out well. I'm more of a generalist type myself, and I think you can see the benefits. See, Bill, you definitely got some success in your... She turns to the camera, camp. wink, and says, see, Bill's for everybody. <laughs> huh. Well, one, two, three, four. I'm going to charge through the... It's, it's a three to go through a heavy. Is it? Okay. Yep. Then I will turn. One, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, that you have a charge through the jungles of Spica, chasing <laughs> your nemesis, former business partner. I feel like I... Oh, God, a three again. Right. Always I assume well you're me. keeping your heat up. Yep. Yeah. That's the plan. Four and three, that's a run again, so. Uh, it probably looks amazing Seven. to see you three. running around in the slightly darkened arena with the rain and continuously blazing lasers, but then, you know, the sky cam is just like, what is he shooting at? There's nothing there. Yeah, just lighting up the hill, writing my name <laughs> in the hill, basically. <laughs> hill, Bailey. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. I'm right here. <laughs> I'm coming. You just happen to be a little bit more uh, maneuverable through these woods than I am. I'm not. I'm not the woodsman. <laughs> I thought you were the hillbilly. Well, that's the goal. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And we see each other. I think so. Yeah, I cut, cut through all the cover. Oh, really? Okay, perfect. Yeah. For you. <laughs> all right. Uh, what's the range? That's just a one for me. And. Well, uh, I think these woods will actually count. So I'll give you one. 12 hexes is still medium range. Seven. I'm out of computer. Okay. I'm firing an ultra mode. That's a hit with one Damn. left torso for five. Okay. I love the idea that you, you're just like, I'll be good. You walk around the corner. Blah! <laughs> <laughs> you know, my plan here is I guess I'm going to try to make you run out of ammo. <laughs> I've seen that before, both for and against my stable. 
But the thing is, we cross train. You should try it sometime. Cross train? What? You going running? <laughs> <laughs> she rolls her eyes. Three. Wow. You sure these dice are working? Jesus. Take it. That's a seven for me. Okay. Interesting thing. Hmm. All right. So going down costs two as well. Uh, Any and, elevation change? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So one, two. And then it costs a move into down elevated trees. Yeah. Three. Three, four, five, six. And yeah, we'll stop there. Okay. We can't see each other through the trees. I guess you could say you can't see the forest through the trees. <laughs> ah. yeah. uh, I don't know what that's reading us. I got a four. I got a ten. At least I didn't get a three. That's true. I'm gonna get you cornered eventually. She gestures broadly with her wolverine as she lands, says, I'm right here, and then brings her autocannon arm back around. <laughs> Are you not entertained, William? I'm nervous. How about that? <laughs> now, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight. Okay. Uh, that passes through the wall, unfortunately. No. Uh, oh, but you're not adjacent to it, so she can see peeking oh, over it. Nope. Okay. All right, but you still get your tree cut. Okay. What's our range? Hopefully not so more than see. 13. What? Six. What is the what is the movement for six hexes? It's two. two. Okay. Okay. Fire and ultra AC. Uh, five in ultra mode. Oh, finally missed. Hey. Does that cost two shots every time you fire it? Yeah. Blazing through that ammo like Blaze 420, bro. <laughs> okay. Oh, there's a six on that die, finally. All right, I got That's seven. A Eleven. Well, well, well. Think you can just 11 up in here, huh, buddy? Up in her? Okay, she moves laterally. All right. Uh, one, Show me how you're going to back her into a corner. Two. There's not a way. Two, uh, no. three, four, uh, five, six, seven. There's, there's no cost to this one, right? Correct. Seven. Yeah. And so that's where I will stop. All right. You splash down into a river. Uh, the water is tumultuous, gathers at your mech's feet. You can see it's, you know, uh, pushing along, creating waves on the like ankle joint and such. Your unsteady leg that has taken such a beating, that right leg. It ain't happy. <laughs> uh, you can't see each other this round. Okay. Wow, we're back to that three, huh? All right. Uh, nine for me. That's where I live my life is threes. <laughs> After owning the opening initiative, now I'm just. Yeah, I'll take it. This is the only thing that's letting me do anything other than just get pot shotted to death. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, All blocking for me. Gotcha. 
make things interesting. Yeah. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, Plenty two, of time for people to read the breaking news. Yeah, there we go. They we watch have this a breaking ballet. news category on the on the wiki now that's in the description of the videos. Yeah, it's exciting. Appreciate people putting that together. And go back and read slightly typo versions of everything I've ever said. <laughs> uh, seven initiative. That is a eleven for me. It's, I wanted to win this one. <laughs> I wanted to win it pretty bad. Oh, it could have been better. Okay. Might just get a shot off on you this time. I want you to push yourself and take risks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that last right step. Good, okay. good. Yeah. I can't take that that extra loss on my the woods in front of me, so. <laughs> me yeah it does <laughs> okay so you fire first right yep all right so that's medium range for my ultra and long range for my srm so i'm going to fire both of those ultras in ultra mode Some pot shotty bullshit, but oh, never mind. Double hit. Uh, mm. Left torso for five. Okay. Want that leg. Uh, right leg for five. Come on now. That's Popped the armor. Open. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> now let's follow up with some SRMs. That right leg, goddamn. SRMs are a miss. That's fine. Look, Count man, it. it's five damage, but it'll eat away at you over time. It absolutely is. Hunchback's a beast, a but can't hold up forever so uh i have a five defensive bonus between the trees and the jump jesus i don't think i can hit we'll so we'll find What's out your gunnery though. uh three so three four five eight and then range is going to push you to plus one for the medium plus, what do you mean plus one for medium uh sniper oh um okay so uh would you would you start with three three or five yeah. uh six and eight and and then 12 yeah you you're shooting for 12s at long range okay because sniper reduces long range from uh four to two right and then well this should be is this medium range three, or is four, it four five six seven oh X's. that's long yeah well so you okay, see so that's hit plus 12s. two it's <laughs> just just gotta hit a 12 ain't no thing uh, so what is it that I should be firing in this realm? So because you gotta ran... gotta keep close watch on your heat with that double double movement. I do. Yeah. All right. So let's see. I think this is gonna be just the six mediums again. Okay. And next time, this time I'm gonna it's throw down the AC twenty, huh? Not in this one. Uh, that upsets the heat curve a little bit. So all right, six mediums. Got to hit twelves. We'll see what happens. That's a miss for the first one. The second is a miss. Third is also a miss. Fourth. Oh, <laughs> it wanted to hit. All right, fifth. <laughs> that is a miss. And the final is also a miss. <laughs> Could have been worse. <laughs> Yeah, you charge after her, you're finally starting to hit stuff, and that's when your leg explodes. Now, just so you know, <laughs> you have a breached leg, so if you go into the water, the leg will become non-functional. I'm talking about oh. death one water. Like full death, water. Okay, okay, okay. If yeah, you yeah, hit yeah. So enough can... to sink the leg into, water will flow into the electronics right. and start shorting everything out. Right, but I can pass through the little stream. Correct. Because okay. that's just like exposed ankle 
you know, that makes sense. We're back to like some uh, early 1800s fashion, you know, so you could still show off the ankle. It's con- <laughs> fuck, holy shit, double ones. Yeah, so it's, it's an 11 initiative for me, so this might be the one. <laughs> Yeah, as I jump into heavy woods, sure. There might be oh, come one on. <laughs> All right. Still, it's so still just as bad. One, I mean, you're still shooting two, through a two three, bonus. Four, five, six, seven. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. I guess you shoot first, yeah? Yeah, I'm gonna um, kick. Ooh, and I will also alpha strike. Okay, my AC is penalized by two because you're within its minimum. Mm. Good. So, what was your movement bonus? Oh, how many did I move there? So uh, I just went eight hexes forward, right? <laughs> uh, I read seven hexes. So seven, yes, that's right. Three. All right. Ultra first is a hit. One hits right torso for five. Right torso for five, okay. Medium pulse. That is a hit. Right arm for six. Okay. SRM hits. Mm. Four missiles hit. Center torso. Okay. For two? Two. Yeah. Left arm. Okay. Left arm. Okay. Right torso. All right. And that total damage is uh, six and eight. That's uh, eight, 12 plus six. Five, 17. Five. Did I hit with the double? I thought you only hit with one. Yeah. All right. So it's not enough. Cool. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I'll take it. Um, the mech's starting to look like. I mean, I'm wearing things down, but the problem is that you can make my mech look dead if you if get lucky. Things in this hit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let me just figure out my heat here. So um, I want to preserve as much as possible. Uh, I ran for two torso. Oh, you have no case on your AC twenty nope. ammo. <laughs> Run that thing naked, lunatic. That's right. Hillbilly has no concerns. <laughs> <laughs> he pilots with the uh, with the power of a man who knows that he has edge to eject with. That's right. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's a consideration you have to take into account for sure. So uh, four times three is twelve. Plus the two for running. Only on Solaris. Only on Solaris could you get away with this <laughs> bullshit. Oh, man. I don't want to take that extra modifier to the movement, but I think I'm going to have to. So, uh, well, I could do... Sorry, math is hard. Yeah. Uh, there with you. All right. Plus two is... Hold on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I'll do... Um, Three mediums, two smalls, and uh, the AC-20. What's your two and hit? The, uh, the two hit. So I start at three. I go plus two for my run. So five plus two for your heavy woods. Yep. Uh, seven plus the three for your jump yep. uh, is tens. Plus one for the heat. Plus one for the heat. Yeah. So that's 11 on those yeah. three. <laughs> this is <laughs> that jump, oh, you're man. You're standing right next, right next to, to me. you. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh shoot! This is exactly how I wanted this match to go. Yep, this is this is brutal for the hillbilly. He's he's feeling sheepish. It's incredible <laughs> because she's such a good counter to you. Yeah, Absolutely. she's really it's not that foil. good against anybody else. <laughs> but no, this makes me look ridiculous. All right, AC twenty. Here we go. 
Ugh. That would have been nice. There's trees exploding all around her. Yep. <laughs> Three Huge mediums. caliber rounds. Got some uh, Bastone flashbacks. Oh, oh no, so close. <laughs> and I'm going with two punches after this, by the way. Yeah. Uh, uh, you have any lasers in your arms? Probably not. I do not. not. Nope. And that's super uh, dangerous for me. One last medium. And that's come on. Two tens in a row. All right. And two smalls. Your punches could be super, super bad. That's not going to do it. And. That's also not going to do it. Man, I haven't hit once. <laughs> All right. Well, I think uh, you're up for your kick. Uh, yes. So three, four, five, six, seven minus two is a five to hit. Exactly what I needed. Oh. <laughs> um, Come on, left leg. Kick table. I mean, if I hit the correct leg, you're basically screwed. Yep. Uh, I'm hitting your front side on a four is the left leg. Yes. Uh, let me get me old battle techie book out here. Pour into this here punchy leggy table thingy. Oh, what was that? Page. No, that's anti mech. We're just punch kicks like. Physical attack. Physical attacks. One forty-four. There's just like a hundred grognards watching this, going, "You don't know the kicks. <laughs> You've done this a hundred times." I'm going, uh, "I don't. I, I don't kick ever." Yeah. I get kicked. That's how that works. Easy um, enough to look up. <laughs> one for five. Okay. So uh, it's eleven to your left leg. All right. Does that go in? No. no. Left leg is pristine. Oh, with a 10 critical? No. Yep. All right, so you'll need to make a PSR at the end of the round. Okay. Being kicked. Oh, because it adds between the... Oh, because of kicked. I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you are receiving a kick, you take a PSR. That makes sense. All right, so two punches for me. My pilot rating is a four. So do you get the... the... Yes, I get all of that junk. Uh, so your heat does not apply to physical attacks okay so you won't get the plus one but you're looking at three four five six seven eight nine ten on punches <laughs> right. hey you punch with the power of kicks kick punch that's right that's right prepare no mm, nothing all right throw like you probably hit a tree and the tree just is fucking yeeted out of existence I need like a through armor critical or a head hit here. No, you just need a head hit. You'll kill her. You'll kill her. Uh, seven. So that's you a throw out these well. savage blows. I feel like the seven probably would hit her, but you know mm. she used the AC five barrel to deflect it. Right there we go. Yeah, sparks <laughs> flying everywhere. Yeah, in the rain, in the slight darkness, we're going full on kaiju battle style. <laughs> We're, Sea Belt just basically like ducking and weaving with those jump jets. We've we've switched genre to Pacific Rim. I like That's it. Where we're at. Oh, I do <laughs> like the idea that she uses feathered jump jets to give herself a speed boost, like a Dempsey roll or mm -hmm. something. Where yep. it's like, you know how to get more power? Fall on your opponent. And everyone's like, <laughs> fall on your opponent. And he's like, yeah, let me show you. Instant knockout. <laughs> <Dude>. <laughs> All right. So my PSR, right? Yep. That's a five. Uh, you need a three. You're good. Uh, That's barely. Uh, initiative. Or like to put you down. Your heat's good. Uh, I am up to ten. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Which not ideal for me from a movement perspective, but my initiative is a seven. Winning here would be great. Ha -ha, ten. Mm. I want to be able to eject when you punch me in the head, so I can't <laughs> afford to edge this. Oh. Come on, Seabell, stay still. <laughs> oh, you're up there, huh? Let me think about this before I take my hand off the piece. 
so far being in the woods has saved my life several times mm -hmm. it definitely throws off your ability plus oh my you god can i can't hit shit and use woods to protect yourself so actually i'm better into uh yeah i put my back up against the wall so that you can't uh pretty unlikely but that not only ensures it, but I also get the full range of jump. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'll take that. It's not the most optimal move, but it's the one I'm going with. Alright. So it's so, up my next turn move as well. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, <laughs> six. <laughs> hey, friend. And that's a... That's actually a run because you have 10 heat. Yep. So you're back to being a 4-6. Yep. Okay, she's gonna alpha strike again. Yeah. <laughs> Three, four, five, uh, plus two for being in minimum range. Uh, well, she's alpha striking the ultra will fire in ultra mode. Okay. So. Need you to miss at least one here. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's unlikely. I'm looking at pretty low numbers to hit, honestly. And then I hey. did I did miss with the ultra. I like that. Unbelievable. Uh, right arm for six. Okay. That's a hit as well. Eight on a six pack is four missiles. Yep. Okay. Center torso for two. All right. Give me a big leg hit here. Miss it? Miss it? <laughs> Left leg, unfortunately. Uh, -huh. uh right torso. Okay. That must be getting pretty low. Mm-hmm. Center torso. All right. Hitting you and I haven't gone internal anywhere yet, but you have stripped a lot of armor. <laughs> <clears throat> She's feeling a little lighter, Buttercup. Ah, she's sticking and moving. <laughs> Somewhere out there, there, your Aztec team is dying. It's a bunch of mafia guys who thought this would be an easy gig and then realize yeah. they have <laughs> 16 hour work shifts replacing heavy armor plating <laughs> three days a week. Sweating themselves through well. All of a sudden, and it's, yeah, instead of shaking down people with guns to, uh, um, to exert them instead they have to <laughs> do real work it's a different protection yeah. racket yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh oh wow that's that's a good one a different protection racket <laughs> all right go ahead what do you got here three mm. uh you start at three your heat gives you four five six seven eight nine ten to hit okay you're getting those numbers down from 12 man i am you know you I just am. gotta keep creeping them down <laughs> Right, it only so, takes one significant hit. So it's true, but still. Um, okay, so the three mediums. There's a nine well, plus the two. 12, we have seven. um, yep. we have fifteen minutes left. This might be a by decision match. It might just be, yeah. And I, I know who's winning that decision yeah. right now. I mean, you uh, <laughs> got fucking blasted so far. Yeah, exactly. But this is uh, how most of those close decision matches end, though, is that the person who's chasing gets close enough and finally unleashes all their weapons well see that's the thing is do i do i alpha strike in this scenario this is like my best shot right and just and go over that's with the heat wow. <laughs> or, or we call that it seth safe? ghost bear right here i know uh, i'm gonna go with the ac20 let's see how it worked for seth oh his name isn't mediums. seth ghost bear anymore <laughs> no it is not ac20 three mediums and uh the two punches afterwards wow and that'll okay, make me drop safe. one heat yeah Oh, I'm kicking, by the way. I forgot to mention it. Oh, you sense. don't have to mention it until the next phase. So. That makes sense. Yeah. So AC 20, here we go. Got to hit tens, we said. So. Yep. Okay. Any of my kicks hitting your leg is going to be... Because uh, right, that's three, three, six, plus my one for the heat, and seven. And then, what is that, heavy woods? Yep. So, and then, yeah, okay. Perfect. AC 20. That is <laughs> big that wall. That wall behind her is missing some nice fair creep. <laughs> some guy right. in the rebar industry is like, yes, having a great time. We're gonna be placing a ton of rebar tomorrow, boys. 
Yeah. The construction crew is definitely getting their money. Well, the the arboreal arboreal gardener out here, as you've been firing your lasers randomly into a jungle, is probably <laughs> just like, oh yeah, it's a big day for me tomorrow. Hell yeah. First medium is a miss. Second medium. Also a miss and the third medium. Yes. <laughs> Wow. Such a mess. You could go through a whole match and not hit once. Wouldn't that be incredible? Oh, that would feel terrible. But yes, that's what's going to happen, it seems like. Five, six to hit. Okay, minus two for it being a kick. That is successful. Uh, one is your right leg. That's the for... one you wanted. Yep, it's for 11. That's just barely hanging on. Uh, no critical, unfortunately. Beautiful. All right, here come my punches. And those are, what did we see? Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I hit a nine. All right. That's getting punch. easier too over time. A little bit. Punch number one. Punch and kick. It's all in my oh, mind. Oh, did not want it. All right, punch number two. <laughs> all right, yeah, she just opens comms with you and it's like, Look, your mech goes down, you could be injured. I think it's clear this match is over between us. Just just back down. Please. You're like, no, I finally got you cornered. I'm on my <laughs> optimal range. That's exactly it. Yeah, I appreciate the offer, but I, I like to finish these things out. Okay. She shrugs. Let's do it. Uno mas. <laughs> Nine. Oh, six. Well, I think you're actually fucked. But I ahead. think I might just be. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. One, two, three, four. You're facing the wall? Is that what I'm doing? Yes. No, I'm not. Oh, you're right. Oh, so you turned around. Yeah. Oh, okay. I understand. You walked backwards there. That's right. That's unfortunate. I wanted to get behind you. <laughs> I figured. Uh, out of your punching range. Okay. Um, you can. Five. Yep. Literally land here. You can't punch me. Not your forward three. Fair. Yeah. Uh, that's your left side. <laughs> No, that's your right side, which is the exact side I want to hit a bunch on. All right, yeah, sure. That's where, that's where I'm going. Pretty flexible move. You left a tree for me to land in and everything. Well, yeah. All right. I didn't have a ton of options. Uh, you will be able to throw a punch with your right arm, actually. So. Oh, okay. Well, I'll that's plan to do that if I make it through. And uh, let's see. How much heat? Am I willing to build? Oh, I would have dropped a heat on the last round. Damn it. So, uh, let's see. Yeah. We're going to go uh, seven mediums and the AC-20. Uh, let me think that through. Because that'll add 10 heat to my current. Puts me at 19, which is the ammo explosion, which is terrifying. But I still have the edge, right? So nobody wants to see the mech completely destroyed. Uh, I'll do six mediums and the AC-20. How about that? I, listen, I would love to see the mech completely destroyed. <laughs> Not to crush your hearts, but to remind <sighs> investors that this is what happens when the wall falls after a thousand years. That's fair. And That's if you fair. spend all your money specializing one mech and then that mech gets destroyed... You gotta spend a lot of money. You could spread it around look. and have a selection of mechs available. That's true. Stock is cheaper. Okay, so two hit. You're at uh, three. So start at three. Go plus one for your wood. Four. Plus three for your jump. Seven. And plus one for my walk. So eight. That's the lowest number I have had all match. <laughs> is that math correct? Sounds right. All right. 
Good deal. AC 20. Come on. This is the round. This is the one you need to do. There it is. Location nine is left leg. Uh, I'm shooting in your front, right? Yep. Yeah. So the okay. good news is that it's in your right torso, so you can fire it. Okay. <laughs> that's good. Uh, you can. I think you can only fire stuff that's in your center and right torso at this angle. Oh, okay. You have to torso twist in order to center and right torso. That makes sense. Okay. So center, right, 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 right. Uh, that denies four of the medium lasers. So what's the? Or I might be wrong about this. If, wait, if you torso twist, it is as if you're facing her forward. Never mind. Okay, you're good. You're good. Uh, right, good what's deal. area nine? Uh, location nine is the left leg. Twenty for twenty. I've got a ten on the crit. It doesn't penetrate. Boo. I will need to make a piloting skill roll at the end of this phase, though. Okay. Well, I, I feel better. At least I got you. one hit. <laughs> okay. And then. Six mediums. Here we go. We finally just made her spend one wealth to repair after the spin. <laughs> That's a miss. Second medium, also a miss. Third. That'll hit. Uh, location seven, center torso for five. And uh, fourth. Miss. Fifth. Hit. Uh, location six is right torso for five. Yeah. And final is a miss. All right. She's going to um, and there's a couple of times I've built some heat, but it wouldn't matter because there's been uh, I should have been tracking it better, but uh, yeah. It wouldn't have mattered because most of the time I had a, a breather round. But yep, yeah, I'm gonna ultra again and alpha strike. So looking at the three, four, five. Okay, looks like I'm shooting for something like five three five again. <laughs> uh, single hit right leg with a critical. Oh, that leg's gone. All right, you fall at the end of this round, period, mm -hmm. end of story, and you got problems. Uh, that transfers up into the right torso. And uh, how much damage did we say? Five? Five. So. Pulse hits uh, left leg. Okay. Six. Uh, that misses. Neat. All right, so I'm going to roll to see if I fall down. Unlikely, but it could happen. I do not fall down. You do, however, fall down. Go down. And that stops the punch. I can't punch, right? Correct. Uh, you end up facing this direction. Got to roll to check damage. Uh, the mech definitely will take damage. Oh, yeah. Um, you have to make another piloting skill check to see if your pilot takes damage versus the same number. Right. Um, let me see here. Uh, four, five, six, seven. You're a three. You took. Tw uh, you didn't take twenty points of damage. You had uh, leg destroyed. Automatic fall. There's uh, a plus five, so you need um, an eight. Ooh. I got a seven. Yeah, you take a head hit as you slam <laughs> your head against your, your neuro helmet, bashes against the console, your head rolls around. <laughs> uh, roll to see if you stay conscious, so anything but double ones. That's it. Okay. What are you, a 50 ton mech? That's right. Okay. You will take uh, 10 damage then. Clusters of five into your uh, right side. So five damage to your center torso. Okay. Five damage to your left torso. Okay. All right. And then she's going to kick you while you're down. <laughs> Ooh. That's I didn't think Seabell had it in her. <laughs> super bad for you because you're now prone. So she gets a minus. Yeah, this is two. an easy shot. Yeah. Um, that's going to be like double ones is the only thing I can miss. 
It makes sense. Yep. Um, there's a thing like if you are prone, I think I target your whole body. My kick. Okay. I understand this. Uh, there's a chart that Junamus has. My only worry is that you might get kicked in the head. You know what I mean? Mm hmm. So. I don't know. Let's look for the key word physical attack <laughs> on Discord and see if we get Junamus linking that. Uh, Nope. Now I'm searching chart, and there are a lot of people who have said the word chart, apparently. <laughs> Incredibly large number of them. Yeah, there's nothing. All right, it's in the Battletech manual. I feel really bad because we're right here at the end, but... Uh, mm, no worries. I want to grab this. <laughs> Like, I, I must punish this. If I don't do it right, you know Dunay is just going to be like, well, this is how it actually works. It's worth it. All right. I get it. I, I definitely own the Battletech manual, but I don't know if I've downloaded it. I have so... Oh, here we go. Battle Mech manual. All right. Because I kept finding the tech manual. Now I'm zooming through this thing. I've never opened it before. <laughs> combat cluster this must be what it is okay different levels table all right so you are a prone mech uh making physical attacks kicking uh, prone mech Kicks and deaths from above may be made against a pro mech. They are always treated as being adjacent with a minus two to using the appropriate hit column on the hit locations table on page 33. Okay, so it's the regular hit location table. So uh, nine is your left leg. Correct. So you take 11 damage through to your torso. So left leg uh, for 11 damage? Yes. Okay, so that goes oh, it internal. Doesn't, oh, so it doesn't totally blow it off. Okay. No, no. Still have delay. Uh, but we got a critical here, too. So it might okay. just be that you actually can't even stand back up. Sounds about right. Uh, your foot actuator is taken up. So, yes. It's, it's going to make it hard. Yeah. <laughs> she blows your foot off. And at yeah. this point, she's standing over you. She... So I'll, I'll open <laughs> comms and yeah. just be like, yeah, no, you got this one. Well done. <laughs> um. Yeah, as you see your foot skitter away and slam into the walls of the speaker arena of the jungle she puts her foot on your battle max mech back lightly and says yes i did have this one william <laughs> listen if you want to talk business we can talk business anytime between you and me but until you get that stable of yours under control the minxtas have nothing to do Apex Dragons. I hear you, C Bill. I appreciate uh, both lessons here today. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you were clear since some of your members maybe don't understand the word no. Yeah. 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 I might have to have a conversation about that, I suppose. So a yellow flare goes up for a, like a warning flare, like a penalty for her standing on your mech, but she lets up and just walks away and uh -huh. yeah, starts her post battle interview almost immediately. Like, she, she's on a phone calling into a talk show before she's even out of the cockpit. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I clamber my way out of the completely prone mech out into the rain and just kind of stand there, pull out the, the, the corncob pipe, you know, style and just start puffing as much as I can. just sitting there getting drenched. So, yeah, Astrid's going to come over with um, like a poncho for you and like a okay. large like sombrero. Nice. <laughs> Something she picked up that she thought was particularly Mariki. She might not be as uh worldly. <laughs> emotionally intelligent, I think okay. might be the word. Okay. You know, she thought it looked Marik ish. 
I'll pop it on my head and say, what do you think of that one? Uh, you may want to reconsider your configuration. Yeah, yeah, I don't disagree. Punchback is a city fighter and is great at short range. What are you going to do when you start going up against guys with Gauss rifles? Yeah, it's, a, it's the right question to be asking. You know, I've had a lot of fun with, with her in this current configuration, but there's definitely some worries. So she's standing there this. with an umbrella. She says, that said, Seabill is a master of her particular combat. She is an excellent jumper and seems to have fully brought the Ultra AC-5 under her control. Yeah. Yeah, that was a bit scary to come up against. She really ran the show. Seems like you're vulnerable to people being pushy with you. Yeah, well, I think that's a fair assessment. You should push back PPCs and cost rifles. Yeah. Yeah, we've got some adjustments. You know, it, this is one of those moments where I kind of kicking myself. Should have taken the tomato out. You know, in hunting, it's important to know where and when your prey is going to be and to use the appropriate weapon. I That's wouldn't right hunt there without a nice rifle. <laughs> you, unfortunately, brought a crossbow. It's true. You know, sometimes I appreciate the added challenge. Today, would have appreciated the level playing field. <laughs> if you could have cornered her, it would have been your battlefield to play with. It's almost there. Almost there. It was basically over, though, at that point. She had my leg dangling by a thread. <laughs> You're lucky she never got behind you at any point. Yeah, that was the one thing that I was careful of. <laughs> that is my analysis of this fight. Well, thank you, Astrid. Then I'll puff away, look into the distance, and start walking off into the rain. In the light, right? The... <laughs> What's great is that the rain is, is fake, right? Because it's coming mm -hmm. from the arena. It's literally a fake <laughs> rain, but yeah. You wind up in an interview with William, who adjusts his cufflinks and says, William, good to see you again. You as well. Things did not go as planned in the arena today, I think. No, not quite. Not quite. Seabell definitely showed the effectiveness of jumping and range in this type of arrangement. Apex Dragons has had a long history of working against Team Mingsta. And mm. while initially they had a lot of success against them, Lately, it has been nothing but losses. Would you say that they are outgrowing you as mech warriors? Ooh, ooh. You know, I think that might be a little bit much. Oh, okay. To say, yeah, I think we can compete. Absolutely. I think what you, you might be seeing is maybe a little bit of a better management of equipment. So you're regretting the custom build you designed yourself. Can't say I regret the build. I have a lot of fun with it. You know, it's challenging to put it into the right situation to make it shine seems like maybe you need to negotiate for the arenas better that's a good tip i have the option to pick <laughs> um you can't like that's media influence you can mm -hmm. attempt to use politics to force your match selection Okay. Also, I think outsiders basically can just target other vulnerable playbooks. Anybody who has a persona, essentially. Okay. And force them to fight where they want. Cool. Um, just not to derail the interview too much, but I do want to make sure you lost, so you gain another point of stress. I do. And because you also gain a point of stress for taking meat damage, that means this stress is real. Ooh, okay. Right. So you only have a hotel, so that means you have two. You got two points of stress: one for the head hit, and then one again for the the um, loss. Yeah, that puts me at five total stress. Oh shit! <laughs> You're in the danger zone right now, buddy. That's right. Okay. Um, mm. ooh, I want you. I really hope you role play a stressed out Billy going into the gladiator hall. That's what I'm looking <laughs> forward to. Um. He should be feeling stressed with everything that's going on. <laughs> you do gain an experience point for participating and another yep. for losing while yep. guaranteeing victory. So that puts me at uh, my second level up. Well, good, because I was going to say, you can't guarantee victory again until you level up. Yep, so we're good to go. Uh, you need a one wealth uh, therapy session to okay. withdraw that damage. And then 
You have a custom mech with internal damage, which is three, but you reduce it down to two because you're a mech tech. Yep. Okay. Um, what do you want to do about your level up? Uh, so second level up, I choose one minus the... one to gunnery or piloting. Yeah, I think you will. What what did I have trouble with today? <laughs> I'll probably go with gunnery in this you missed, regard. You missed all of your punches. You hit all some of, my of your punches. <laughs> some of your gunnery. I mean, look, it's it's trite to say you you're in a gunnery mech, but if you had hit just once with a TSM punch, it would have been unreal. Yeah. The effects yeah. would have been devastating. Well, and those those rolls were lower by default already. Yeah. So it's uh, just remember yeah. a kick gets a minus two to it automatically. Yeah, I didn't think about that. And you're absolutely double damage right. kick I, is unreal amount of damage. I really thought that the the kicks were more punishing to the person doing it than they are. If you right? if you miss, it is punishing because you have to make a roll. But right. for you, a kick is twenty points of damage. Yeah, I completely forgot about that aspect of it and the, the negative okay. two to hit is beautiful like next time <laughs> okay anything else you want to do in your interview with william um no yeah like like you said hillbilly's just stressed he's just going to kind of give like simple answers you know and just peace out as soon as it's reasonable okay. anything post interview that you want to do Beyond um plot your counterattack against the mob yeah right terrifying but no uh post interview i'll just uh, get to training astrid essentially uh we'll get her in the wolfhound we'll we'll take her through some actual physical like exercises in it do some target practice and uh you know roll through those pieces i'll hop in the tomatoa with her and just be like yeah this is what i should probably have been using last time god damn <laughs> Make sure you keep that Tomatoa PDF around because I yeah. didn't see. I, I recreated one. I didn't have a PDF, but I, I got into Solaris Skunk Works there and recreated it. Okay. Good, good, good. <laughs> That's a Spirit Customs. That's right. And you know, so, so far, Spirit Customs had good success until it exploded horribly. <laughs> got, it was spectacular, though. Got wrecked. <laughs> yeah, right. it did. It definitely was a unique mech build that did yeah. the job um no nothing post episode then uh would you like to train your intern or would you like to use the tutelage of brody harrison time management guru <laughs> no I'll, I'll be training astrid for sure project we'll, manager we'll get her her next uh stage of skill <laughs> all right what are you training her in um so we got her uh synced up to the wolfhound so we'll do essentially like physical exercises in the wolfhound and get her used to piloting and uh, do some target practice same thing you did last time piloting interesting okay ah she's gonna surprise saya at some point with her surat physical attacks dishonorable <laughs> cowardly ways of the inner sphere mm. all right it was a rough match for you you really tried your best to bring your top weapons to bear but it did not work out for you i hope you had yeah. fun though it was that was that was really interesting i think that's the the kind of the neat part right the the battle tech right the asymmetry between these types of things uh i think it's probably the first match where you haven't been able to bring your primary weapons to bear where you haven't been able to rainbow dash people yeah exactly i mean it that that opening salvo i was able to start like right next to her right if that had gone you were just like surprised and i was like nope i'm gone <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly just the dice were just not there at all so <laughs> okay all right thank you for joining me sorry to go over time here and no uh, i gotta run all right man i'll catch you later yep